Hello everyone and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. So today we're gonna to talk about two important concepts or three better yet, the normal distribution, the Z-score and the empirical rule. This is gonna be our second video for the Statistics Python series. Statistics is the foundation of data science. That is why we're going through this series and statistical concepts show up a lot in interviews for data careers. So it's very important to have a great statistical foundation. So let's go ahead and get started with some objectives. So we're gonna talk about why the normal distribution is important, especially if you're trying to pursue a data analytics or a data science career. We're gonna talk about characteristics of the distribution. We're gonna be able to generate a random normal distribution using NumPy. We're gonna talk about a special case of the normal distribution called the standard normal distribution. And then we're gonna talk about the concept of the empirical rule. So why should we care? So the normal distribution is one of the most common distributions in data science. It's going to eventually allow us to perform hypothesis tests such as TEAS tests, ANOVA, et cetera, where we're gonna be able to compare means within two samples. So is the mean product sale for January different than the mean product sales for December, okay? So those are some low hanging fruit analysis that we can do with normal distributions. And then the normal distribution is like the ultimate end game, okay? Where we can change non-normal distributions to become normal. So our distributions are trying to become normal so we can utilize models and so that we also can perform hypothesis tests. So let's talk about some characteristics of a normal distribution, also called a Gaussian distribution. So a normal distribution and a Gaussian distribution is the same thing. And by definition, it's going to be a symmetric bell curve where the mean, median, and mode are equal. So we have an example of a normal distribution below, right? And here we see that it has a mean of 30 and a standard deviation of five. So in this case, if the mean is 30 minutes, the median is 30 minutes, and the mode is also 30 minutes. It's a continuous distribution utilizing continuous numeric variables. It has an underlining probability density function with it, which we talked about in lesson one. The two main parameters of interest here is the mean and the standard deviation. So mean is denoted by mu, which is the special symbol here, and the standard deviation is denoted by sigma. The area under the curve is going to be one, and it's gonna be more dense in the center and less dense at the tails, okay? So by definition, a normal distribution is a symmetric bell curve where the mean is equal to the median, which is equal to the mode, okay? So let's actually generate one of these random normal distributions. So I'm gonna import NumPy and Seaborn. Both of these libraries were discussed in our Python fundamental series. So that is also on this channel. Check it out if you need a refresher. But NumPy is gonna help us generate the random normal distribution and Seaborn is going to help us plot it. So in this case, I'm starting with a mu or mean of four. I'm just gonna change that to two for now. And I'm starting with a sigma, let's say of one, and I'm generating 1000 data points. And from that, I'm going to call np.random.normal, and I'm going to pass in my mean, which is mu, my standard deviation, which is sigma, and the size. Then I can plot this using sns.hisplot. I'm just going to take the variable of the distribution and run it through there. KDE means that if I have want to have an over, overlapping density plot as well. Okay, and this is what I get out, right? I see that the mean is at two, is giving me standard deviations of one on each side, and I see that it has overlapped this bell curve, okay? I can change this. I can do a mean of zero and a sigma of two and rerun this plot. And I see that my mean is zero and that my standard deviation is incremented by two on each side. I can do a standard deviation of four, and I also can see how that looks. So you definitely can play around with this piece of code. This notebook is on my GitHub, which will be linked in the description. 
So now let's look at and make sure we understand the relationship between standard deviation and how that affects the appearance of my normal distribution. So right here in blue, I have a standard deviation of one. And it looks like pretty much a symmetric bell curve, okay? They're all symmetric, but this one looks like it's pretty equally distributed, okay? When I decrease the standard deviation, that means that my data points are now closer around the mean. So they're moving in closer around the mean. So as my standard deviation decreases, my normal distribution becomes narrower. As my standard deviation increases, and you might not be able to see this number, but that's the standard deviation of two. But as my standard deviation increases, my normal distribution becomes wider. So standard deviation is measuring the spread of my data relative to the mean. So as my standard deviation becomes smaller, my data points are more closely around my mean. As my standard deviation increases, my data points are further apart from my mean, okay? So that is that relationship between standard deviation and appearance, and mean is just gonna be where my curve is centered. Okay, so we were able to generate a random normal distribution. So now let's talk about a special case of the normal distribution known as the standard normal. And this is where our mean is going to be zero. So the center of that curve is going to be zero and the standard deviation is one. And the benefits behind having a standard normal distribution is that it is going to allow us to calculate Z-scores, okay? And Z-scores, simply put, are just how far you are from the mean, the number of standard deviations of the mean. So it is going to also allow us to compare scores from different normal distributions, which is ideal in hypothesis testing. So I can, pair, can compare scores that has a sample of weights from, um, that is mostly males, and I can compare a sample of females to that, okay, to see if there are some differences in the mean weight. So it's going to allow us to do comparisons across different distributions, which is very ideal. And put simply, the z-score is just how far you are from the mean, the number of standard deviations you are from the mean. So in this example that we have here, right, we have the mean, it looks like at around 75, right, for my population. And this is, is a non-standard normal distribution. And this is how the standard normal distribution looks where the z-score is on the x-axis. And the z-score tells us the number of standard deviations. We are away from the center with the center being zero or the mean being zero. So I can go back and forth between these two, right? So in this case, right, if I have the value in question is 75, so I say 75 minus the mean, which is also 75, which is zero, zero divided by the standard deviation, let's just say that that is five, zero divided by anything is zero, okay? So the, the z-score, for 75, let's say it's centimeters for height, is going to be zero, okay? So I can take something that is not a standard normal distribution and convert it to a standard normal distribution. And this is allows us to put it on equal playing fields, especially when we wanna com do comparisons, okay? So this leads me to talk about the empirical rule Okay, and the empirical rule, rule is gonna let us know how extreme a value in question is. And so this is a little tiny. So let's go ahead. I'm going to blow this up a little bit for us so that we can see it. So let's just go ahead. Some back in code with equals 600 height equals 600. Let's go ahead and run that. That looks awesome. And let's go back to the slideshow. All right, here we go. So it blew up some. Awesome. So the empirical rule is going to allow us to know how extreme a value in question is, okay? And basically, this rule has a few things that we're going to have to memorize, right? So 
basically this is zero this is our mean okay this is one standard deviation from the mean right so within one standard deviation of the mean that is going to house 68 percent of all of our data within two standard deviations of the mean so now i'm here with the purple that was an ugly line that's going to house 95 percent of our observations and with in three standard deviations of the mean that's going to house 99.7 percent okay so it lets you know that most of your population so if you're if this was a distribution of height for instance most of the population is going to be within three standard deviations of the mean so if we get a z-score that's four five or six or negative four negative five negative six that means that that is an extreme height, okay? So if I get a data point somewhere right here, that's rare to happen. If I get a data point within here or a Z-score within here, okay, that, that's common. That's, what, that's within what I expect it to be, okay? So this is the empirical rule. It allows us to figure out how, what percentage of the population lies within a certain standard deviation range. So once again, one standard deviation, right? So this is negative one, this is one, that is 68%. Two standard deviations from the mean, that is 95%. Three standard deviations from the mean, that is 99.7%. So let's look how we how this makes sense utilizing a scenario, okay? So a scenario, a student received an 85 on an organic chemistry test. The mean score of the test is 78 with a standard deviation of three. So X is the value that we're interested in, which is 85, 78 is the mean, and three is the standard deviation. So the z-score formula is the value in question minus the mean divided by sigma. And that's going to give us a z-score on our standard normal distribution. So when I run this, I get a z-score of about 2.3. But where does the z-score land on the actual normal distribution? Okay, so the z-score is going to be somewhere, and let's get out our drawing tool, about right here. So this person, it has a Z-score right here. So that means that their organic chemistry score test is far away from what the mean is, okay? Getting an 85 on this test is pretty much almost uncommon, right? So we can also calculate what's the probability of somebody getting an 85 on this test or less. And we talked about this in our first video, right? Where we can do CDF functions in Python to get the probability, right? So let's see, what is the probability that somebody will score an 85 or lower on their organic chemistry test? So we can look at that by importing scipy.stats and i'm doing stats.norm because this is a normal distribution in question dot cdf and i'm passing in the z-score okay so 2.33 is the z-score from above and so it prints out a probability where 99 percent of the students are going to score an 85 or less on this actual test so the student in question right he did a pretty great job, okay? He is sitting over here. He's further away from the mean outside of two standard deviations, right? And we know that this little piece on the distribution, so this little tail right here, that's gonna house 2.5% of the data. So that's pretty a rare score to get on that test, okay? But is it significantly rare? We don't know unless we do a hypothesis test, okay? So that is an overview of the standard normal distribution along with the normal distribution, Z-score, and the empirical rule. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you at the next video.